Good morning once again. This is our third session to be together to talk about Advent carols, hymns, songs that we love to sing. So this morning, what we're going to do is look at, I forgot, this isn't necessarily morning for you, but anyway, hello, I'm Cindy Kingery, and the, we're going to look at two, probably some of the most beloved Christmas carols that anyone wants to sing, listen to during this season. And the first one we're going to talk about, and you may know already a lot about this, is Away in a Manger. Away in a Manger was first called Luther's Cradle Hymn because for many years they thought that this song was written by Martin Luther and that he wrote it to sing to his children. Now, it's now known that the song was written as part of a collection of Martin Luther's 400th anniversary, but it, it he did not write it. They think that this story about this carol originated from James Murray. He published a book called Dainty Songs for Little Lads and Lassies in 1887, and he called Away in a Manger Luther's Cradle Hymn, and therefore the inaccurate information got started. Away in a Manger is a Christmas carol that was first published in the late 19th century it was used and is used widely in the English speaking world. And they, what I read was that in Britain, it's one of the most popular carols. A Methodist hymnologist named Fred Geely wrote that evidence suggests that a way in a manger is solely an American product because he said that the original two stanzas probably started with German Lutherans in Pennsylvania about 1885. And he's basing this on the form that is used in the, in the song, in the poem part of the song. It's unlike anything that would have been composed in Germany at that time. Now there were two verses until verse three appeared in Gabriel's Vineyard Songs, which was about 1892. And these were com compiled by a gospel composer Charles H. Gabriel to go in his songbook called Vineyard Songs. You know, one thing we need to remember is, is that standards for who got credit for compositions were not really enforced before the 20th century. So songs, poems might be attributed to someone just because it sounded like a logical conclusion. Well, this sweet little song has been sung to 41 different tunes. And during World War I, while Germany was battling the United States, many groups began to sing the words to a little, t uh, to uh, Away in a Manger. They sang it to Flow Gently, Sweet Afton. So when you're inclined to say, well, that's not how it goes, don't say that. It's just another version of the tune for this carol. So whether you say, Away in a Manger, or if you say, away in a manger, they're both right. You, you're not wrong. You know, I've never actually analyzed this carol because for me, it was just a nice lullaby to sing during the Christmas season. And it describes the scene where our Savior was born. But in verse one, away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the bright sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. Now, in verse 2, it's been noted that a baby who does not cry is cause for concern. So when little Lord Jesus awakes and no crying he makes, then we're supposed to be concerned about that. I just felt like he was a happy baby that was lulled by the soft sounds of his mother and the respectful animals in the stable. So this second verse, the cattle are lowing, the baby awakes, but little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love you, Lord Jesus, look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. Now, the final verse is in the form of a prayer and it says, be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care and take us to heaven to live with thee there. So we've got this lovely phrase, I love thee, Lord Jesus, look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. 
Jesus is watching over children, especially at night. His comforting presence is with us, whether we're awake or whether we're asleep. Now, here is the statement that takes care of all this. In spite of controversies over who wrote what, and perhaps a bit of slippery theology, this little gem of the season is still sung each year with fervor and joy, and hopefully we will continue to do that. Or how about this? One commentator said, who cares? Certainly not the generations of children around the world who have come to love and know the little Jesus through this sweet carol. And they have gone to sleep praying, I love thee, Lord Jesus, look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. Amen to both of these. And the second carol that we're going to talk about today is another one that is steeped in tradition. And we all expect to sing it at some point during the Christmas season, if not several times. And that is the classic carol, Silent Night. So we look at two, at, at Luke, the second chapter, verse eight. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. Now, as many of you probably know, a broken church organ was the reason that Silent Night was created, or at least created at that point in time. So here's one of several versions of the story of how Silent Night, A Perfect Carol, was written on this Christmas in 1818, now think about how old this carol is in Urbendorf, Austria. That's a small village near Salzburg. A roving band of actors was performing in towns throughout the Austrian Alps. And on December the 23rd, they arrived at Urbendorf. They were to reenact the story of Christ's birth in the small church of St. Nicholas. Unfortunately, the St. Nicholas church organ wasn't working and would not be able to be repaired until after Christmas. Now, some versions of this story tell you that there were mice in the organ, and that was the problem. But other stories say that it was rusty, and that was the culprit. But either way, whichever story we choose to believe, if either one of them is even true, the organ was broken, would not, would not function. So, the actors had to present their Christmas program in a private home. So that Christmas presentation told from the um, chapters of Matthew and Luke, Joseph Moore, who was the assistant priest at St. Nicholas, was moved by this presentation. Even though it couldn't be in his church, he was there and listened to it. So while he was walking home, he was so moved by this that he took a longer route home and the path took him over a hill that overlooked the village. From that hilltop, Moore looked down on the peaceful, snow-covered village. It was a Christmas card-like scene. Moore, in that moment, remembered a poem that he had written a couple of years ago, around 1816. Now, the poem was about the night when angels announced the birth of the Messiah to the shepherds on a hillside. The original poem had six verses. Moore thought that poem set to music would make a good carol for his congregation at the Christmas Eve service that very next night. Only thing is, he did not have any music to go with this poem. So although he had shared the poem with other people, it had never been published, nor had he himself come up with a melody for it. But the next day, Moore went to see the church organist. Franz Gruber. Now, Franz Gruber was a school teacher and also the church organist. Gruber had very few hours to come up with a melody that would be sung and it would be accompanied on a guitar. But by that evening, Silent Night was born. The compilation of a poem by Moore and a melody by Gruber, it no longer mattered that the church organ wasn't working. They had a song that could be sung without the organ. So on that Christmas Eve, Gruber and Moore sang, accompanied by Gruber's guitar. They sang this new composition to the congregation. Some versions of the story tell you that the choir learned the song quickly that afternoon and that they were able to sing also on, at the Christmas Eve service. But most of the time, it's attributed to Gruber and Moore singing the song as a duet. Weeks later, the organ at St. Nicholas Church was repaired. 
So when Gruber sat down to play this newly repaired organ, he started to play this simple melody that he had written for Moore's Christmas poem. The organ builder, and his name was Carl Marocker, took copies of this music back to his own village because there were two well-known families of singers, the Rainiers and the Strassers, and both of them put this new song, this new music, this new Christmas carol into their Christmas season repertoire. You know, Silent Night for us is traditionally sung at the Christmas Eve services of really a lot of churches. And with a candle in our hand, we quietly sing this beautiful hymn <clears throat> written because of a broken organ in a small church in Austria. All four verses are found in the Methodist hymnal on page 239. Now, whether you attend church services, whether you're watching from home, get your candle and sing. <clears throat> sing like no one is watching. Silent night, holy night. All is calm, all is bright. Round yon virgin, mother and child. Holy infant, so tender and mild. Sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep. In heavenly peace. Silent night, holy night. Shepherds quake at the sight. Glory stream from heaven afar. Heavenly host sing Alleluia. Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. Silent night, holy night. Son of God loves pure light. Radiant beams from thy holy face with the dawn of redeeming grace. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Silent night, holy night. Wondrous star, lend thy light. With the angels, let us sing. Alleluia to our King. Christ, the Savior, is born. Christ, the Savior, is born. One last thought I'd like to leave with you. These are Christmas gift suggestions, and they don't cost a penny. To your enemy give forgiveness. To an opponent, show tolerance. To a friend, give them your heart. To a customer, give service. To all, give charity. To every child, give a good example. And to yourself, give respect. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we once again thank you for this day. We once again thank you for all your many blessings. And we thank you for these two beautiful carols that we enjoy singing during this beautiful Advent season. They give us hope and they give us the knowledge that our Savior is there for us, waking or sleeping. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.